Hey yo, what's up guys and welcome back to a brand new video. My name is Connor. It is so great to see you here again. Welcome to the video. <laughs> In today's video, I'm going to be talking about light painting. Now, this is something that I have been experimenting a lot on lately over on my Instagram stories. Now, if you don't watch my Instagram stories, definitely go check them out. That's where I'm going to be doing a lot of my experimentation and I love to hear your feedback on everything that I'm doing over there. Today's video is something that I'm super excited to share with you guys. I hope that it can give you a few ideas that you can implement yourself to bring your photography to the next level. I'm going to be showing you a few of the shots that I've taken myself and I think that it is pretty crazy some of the things that you can capture. I'm going to be going through some of the self portraits that I've been taking and some of the product shots that I've also shared over on my Instagram story. Like I said, check it out. <laughs> and I hope you guys have been enjoying the content that I've been putting up. It's been so much fun to make it, but now I'm gonna bring it all in, bring it to this video, and then show you what I do when I'm trying to get these shots. So without further ado and moving on swiftly, let's get straight into the video. Let's go. So I'm thinking of making this into a small little series on light painting because in today's video I just want to mainly focus on light sources that you might be able to find in your home. Now today I'm going to be using my phone, a little flashlight and uh, well maybe you might not have the third thing but uh, <laughs> I have this little contraption. Now this is an RGB strip LED and I decided to tie it around a little pole which was actually a repurposed broom handle. <laughs> Now the reason that I did this is this is an RGB strip of LEDs and what I did, the reason why I wrapped it around this broom handle was essentially to get the effect that I was looking for which was some sort of light wand <laughs> and I can't wait to show you the results because they're pretty cool. Now to start off you're gonna have to try and find the darkest room in the house. For me when I began I started off over in the hallway there because in one way we're lucky we don't have any windows there. <laughs> so to get this light painting effect you're gonna have to set your camera to a long exposure. This is why you're gonna need that dark room because the main light source that you're gonna want is from whatever you're gonna be using in the shot. And just as a quick crash course in taking a long exposure Right here over to the far left we have the shutter speed which here it shows that it's at 3.2 seconds and next over it is the aperture right now I have it at f4.0 that's the lowest that the lens goes and then over the far side is the ISO which is going to be consistently at 100 throughout this video. So moving into the first photo this one I am so stoked about it just came out so cool it did take me a few tries but I love the result. So it's just me standing in the hallway and I have the light source just over to my right behind me so it kind of makes this really funky kind of silhouetted kind of look to it. And given that it's in a little enclosed space you can really see how that light bounces off the walls to really set the scene. It kind of looks a little bit burlesque if I'm not... <laughs> but I'm still super happy with how it came out. Now the settings that I set up for this photo are gonna be... Uh, the shutter speed, which I just showed you, is at 3.2 seconds. I shot it at 50 millimeters because I had it just outside the door so I would be able to catch my surroundings to be able to get that extra light in. Next up is the ISO. As I mentioned, it's going to be 100 consistently throughout all the shots that I'm taking just to help reduce any noise that might be introduced if I was working at a higher ISO. And then the F number. Now I dialed the F number up to F16. The reason for this is I wanted more in focus in the shot so I'd be able to get a more clear shot. Super happy, so stoked with how it came out. But now we're going on to the next one. And the next one is a little different. <laughs> I wanted to go for a different kind of look, a different kind of style. So check this out. So as you can see in this one, it just looks so different but it looks so cool. I love this one because I decided that I was going to try and mix some of the colors in with the LEDs. I set it up with the remote that comes with it. So the RGB lights really played a massive role in this as it slowly changed from different colors as I swayed the stick essentially <laughs> around. Now the settings that I had for this one, I had F16 so I could get as much in focus as possible. And then I set the timer, the shutter speed to 10 seconds. Now the reason for this is so that I could get more of an effect, more light streaming and all that into the photo, which is why there are so many more streaks in it. And again, I shot it at 50 millimeters 
and the ISO is still at 100. And again, super stoked with how it came out. And having said that, let's move on to the, into the next one. Now this shot is gonna be a product shot. I wanted to try a little more, I wanted to be a little more dynamic in the shots that I'm taking, so it's not just all gonna be of me. <laughs> so in this next shot, I decided to take a photo of my camera, my Canon 750D. But instead of using this big old baton that I have here, <laughs> I decided to use a small flashlight that I had. And as you can see, the results of it are crazy. They're so cool. Now, the reason why I love this so much is it has so much potential in it. With using the flashlight, you can decide that if you want to put in some drawings or so, or put in a message, like having that single stream kind of effect really adds to the photo. Now, how I set this up was I had some black cards lying around so I decided to try and not distract from any backgrounds. I put it up against the wall and made sure that there weren't any extra streams of light or anything reflecting into the scene just so I could really put emphasis on the camera which let's say if you're doing product photography that is the best way to be able to get your subject to really stand out and whoever is looking at the photo their eyes are completely drawn to what the product is. As you can see here as well like with the light I kind of played around with it, bouncing some of the light off the cardboard, and altogether it just came together really nicely, in my opinion. I just, I think that's pretty awesome. <laughs> so the settings for this one, I had it at f16, I had the shutter speed set at 3.2 seconds again, but this time I'm shooting at 80 millimeters. Now, yeah, I don't think it was completely necessary to shoot at such a high focal distance, but it was just more so that I would be able to focus in more on the subject that I'm shooting. And again, the ISO is at 100. All in all, super happy with this photo. It looks so good. And I can't wait to show you the next one because this out of all of them is actually my favorite one. And this one, I used my phone as the light source. It just looks so dope. So let's move on. Let's get into that one take a look man it just looks so good <laughs> what i did is i downloaded a background off the internet or a photo of the rainbow you can do it too it's really simple but it came together so well again it's another product photo of my canon 750d and i just love how the colors bounce off the bottom of the camera itself if you really look towards the lens there it just looks so good and you can also note that where the colors cross over you can see how that light changes into white as they mix i love that about it it looks so so cool <laughs> I think you could tell at this stage that I just love this medium of photography. And so this one was actually set up pretty similar to the last one. I had the F number at F4.0 at this one. So it really opened up that aperture to get more of a shallow depth of field. And the shutter speed was at 3.2 seconds and the focal distance 85 millimeters and the ISO at 100. Man, I just love this one. <laughs> and I can't wait to make more of these shots. Like they look so cool. And I also wanna take this outside. So I wanna do another video on light painting with where myself and maybe one of the guys go out and do that. Super stoked about it. And that brings me to the end of the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. This was such a fun one to make and I can't wait to make more. I'm just, <laughs> I'm so pumped up right now and I'm so excited to really jump more into this medium. It's something new for me and to be this excited about it, it's been a little while because I feel like I've just discovered an entire new medium that I can really jump into and get on into. Thank you guys so much for watching. It has been a blast to be back. I'm so glad I can make it to this. I can, yeah. it has been a blast to make. I'm so happy to be back. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> And be sure to like, comment down below if you have any further questions that you would like to ask me. I'm more than happy to help you. I will always do my best to answer your questions. And if you are watching this on my YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, again, thank you so much for watching. Can't wait to see you in the next one. I'll see you later.